Hello, I'm Tendai Charles, Director of the Centre for Research in Digital Education here at the British University in Dubai. In today's presentation, there are four matters pertaining to online teaching, which I'd like to discuss with you. Firstly, the need for a learning management system. Secondly, the importance and significance of training faculty on how to use the LMS. Thirdly, ways it can be used to enhance the student learning experience. And finally, I'll be sharing some examples of educational continuity here at the British University in Dubai. Now, when it comes to teaching in an online format or indeed in a blended learning format, pretty much all of the research suggests that you need to have an effective and meaningful learning management system at your institution. At the British University in Dubai, prior to the COVID-19 situation, um, we were using Blackboard Learn. But we noticed the majority of faculty were not really using the system effectively. When we asked them why they're not using the system, they would actually pose a question back to us and say, well, why should I use it? Um, they had this concept that it was sufficient to send PowerPoint slides by email to their students, and this was good enough for online teaching. So we had to spend some time explaining that uh, online teaching, you know, it's much more complex than that, and they can really make the most out of the system for those purposes. They would then come back up to us and say, well, actually, Blackboard Learn is a bit difficult for us to use. It's, it's quite text heavy. There's lots of menus, and we don't really understand how to use it properly. So this was interesting to me personally because it reminded me of the technology acceptance model proposed back in the 1980s, um, which essentially says if you want someone to adopt, accept, and use a particular piece of technology, there are two variables in particular uh, you need to convince them of. First of all, they need to perceive that this technology is useful for their needs. And secondly, they need to perceive that it's easy for them to use. So in our case, our faculty didn't think it was necessary and didn't think it was easy to use. So in the discussion with the vice chancellor, um, he said to me prior to the COVID-19 situation that I'd like us to upgrade to a new learning management system, which is even better than Blackboard Learn. And so I was assigned the task of doing some research, looking at the market and seeing what's available. So my research basically showed me that there were two main uh, competitors on the market at the moment, um, Canvas and, and Blackboard, obviously. And I saw a number of research papers published in the United States showing that some universities had Blackboard 9 and they actually stopped using it and adopted this Canvas system. And the main reason cited was always that the user interface of Canvas was a bit more user friendly than Blackboard Learn. Um, interestingly, faculty would say Blackboard Learn was more powerful and had more features than Canvas, yet because the interface was slightly more easier for them, um, they preferred that. However, I couldn't find any research comparing Canvas to Blackboard Ultra. Um, and so what we decided to do was invite both Canvas and Blackboard to our university. And we did this in January. They came, they presented both their systems. Um, we then requested demo accounts for a period of 30 days. And we allowed faculty to test out both systems for a full month. Um, we then devised our own internal questionnaire, our own survey, to find out faculty's perceptions on the two variables mentioned earlier, um, being perceived usefulness and perceived ease of use. Now, the uh, survey is quite extensive. I'm not going to go through all of the questions there, but there are three points I'd like to share with you. Uh, first of all, when asked about the usefulness of Blackboard Ultra compared to Canvas in terms of course management, 80% um, of faculty thought that Blackboard Ultra was a better system to use. When we asked them to compare uh, the ease of use for Blackboard Ultra and Canvas, 100% of faculty thought Blackboard Ultra was easier to use. Um, and it's an incredibly intuitive system. And then finally, when we asked them which one they preferred to adopt, 90% of our faculty said that they would prefer to use Blackboard Ultra rather than Canvas. So uh, this was something very important for the Vice Chancellor. He wanted it to be a decision that came from faculty rather than from the Dean's office. And so we went ahead and upgraded to Blackboard Ultra. Um, I must thank the Blackboard team in the UK for helping us. We did the upgrade in about two weeks, which is unprecedented. Usually, you know, a system-wide transition like that would take three to four months. Um, okay, so we had the new system now, and the next step for us was to train our faculty. Um, already on YouTube, there are videos developed by Blackboard um, which show faculty how to use the system. 
But we wanted something more than simple, you know, uh, click here and click there for doing things because actually it's very intuitive and, and people could work out what to do for themselves anyway. Um, what we were concerned about was digital teaching pedagogy. So we developed our own internal course where we showed faculty different ways they could teach in a synchronous format, asynchronous format. Um, this is an actual screenshot of, of the course itself. And there's a video there of me teaching faculty um, what micro learning means and how they can develop their own micro learning course in Blackboard for their students. We then highlighted the importance of social constructivism. And essentially, when you look at all of the research about online learning, students tend to have high dropout rates and high rates of failure when they're studying completely independently in the online context. Even if you think way back, because I mean, there's research spanning years about, about this topic, if you look way back to the 1990s when we had Rosetta Stone, which was a software that supposedly was to, to help you learn French or German within a six month period or any language uh, in a six month period, um, you find that most people would use it for about two weeks and then they would stop using it. And that's because learning as human beings is a social process for us. We need to learn with others. And so we wanted to make sure our faculty were creating uh, learning um, situations where students could study together both in class, but also outside of class. And so we promoted the team-based learning approach and taught them how to develop this in Blackboard. Now, my personal favorite feature in Blackboard is this uh, adaptive release function, which I believe is now re being rebranded as conditional availability. So in a normal face-to-face -face contact with students, obviously, uh, differentiation is something that's very important to us. We want to um, support the weaker students and provide more challenging activities for the advanced students. What's amazing about uh, Blackboard Ultra is you can actually take this a step further and develop personalized learning paths to students, which is absolutely amazing. So we taught faculty how to do that. And, and these will be based either on a student's performance or indeed on, on date and, and time. We then taught faculty how to create effective online exams. And one of the things I like about Blackboard Ultra in particular, it has a built-in algorithm, which works almost as artificial intelligence does, in that it can see your exam questions and based upon a, a trial run, a pilot, or even a, a real a test of students using it, it could determine how effective these questions are. So in this particular example here, you see on the screen, this is for a midterm exam that I ran. And uh, Blackboard says to me, question four needs review. It says that because this is a matching activity, we're essentially a matching a word with its definition. And over 90% of the students um, uh, pass this with, with no problems at all. And so the system saying this question is a little bit too easy. Uh, conversely, there's some questions I had which are too difficult. And again, it would recommend that I, re I review the questions. And it's very simple to use because uh, you can see there's a, a black box which says uh, edit assessment. So directly here in the question, I can click on that box. It takes me to the question bank and I can make improvements to the question directly there and then. So it's a very simple system to use and very uh, intuitive for faculty. Now, in terms of enhancing uh, the student experience, this is why in the title I, I say this has been a blessing in disguise for us because we found multiple ways of supporting learners in the online context. Uh, first of all, with the Blackboard Ultra system, it works perfectly in a web browser. Now, Blackboard 9, I believe students needed an app. There was an app they had to download to their devices, and through the app, they can use Blackboard. And we didn't like that extra step they had to take. With Blackboard Ultra, they just log into a web browser, and it works perfectly, which is, which is brilliant. So it gives them more control over where they learn and when they learn. We know that for most of our students in particular, they're always with their mobile phones, whether it be on social media or doing emails or watching YouTube or whatever. And so we like the fact that they can now use their device comfortably for studying the content that we teach. Now, during the uh, pandemic, obviously everyone's isolated. Uh, uh, we thought that we wanted to help students to have some sort of aspect of, of a social feeling even though it's an online context, and set up these virtual student lounges. Um, so they were safe spaces where students can log in pretty much at any time, and they could just collaborate and talk with each other about topics that were not related to their studies. Um, another way we're supporting students is we're providing faster, more detailed, and, and better feedback to them. Um, again, in Blackboard, it's very easy to provide feedback to your learners because everything's in, in one place submit their assignment to you. You can see the assignment very easily, and then you can instantly create comments. Um, 
what's good as well is that you can create individual comments for individual students, but also if there's a group of learners and you have a group activity, you can then uh, give feedback to the entire group in one shot as well. So students have really thanked us uh, quite extensively for the speed at which they were getting feedback now compared to how it was before um, uh, we moved to, to Blackboard Ultra. And I suppose the real game changer for our institution being this tool Blackboard has um, named Ally. So Ally is all about digital accessibility and digital inclusion. Now we have uh, a number of uh, students with special educational needs uh, at our university. And in the traditional face-to-face -face context, they come with their helpers, or if they don't have a personal helper, we ourselves as teachers, we can give them some additional support in class. Um, and we were concerned about the transition to online and how we can actually help those learners in, in a similar fashion, or at least as much as we could. And so this tool is amazing because it taught us so much about digital accessibility, which we didn't know. Uh, so for example, this is my first uh, experience of using the system. I uploaded uh, a simple PDF document um, to Ally, and it gave me this uh, score, 47%. And then it says to me that this document does not have headings. So I thought, well, that's, that's bizarre. It does have headings. I'll put a heading in this document. Um, and then there's an option that says, what does this mean? So I click on that. And then it explained to me that for students with certain special needs, for example, students with uh, eyesight issues, with eyesight impairment, um, they're likely to have the text read out to them on some sort of special uh, device or reader. And so although I've used bold font for my headings, that's not going to be read by them that the students are using. And so it then taught me how to create headings in a way that's uh, suitable for those devices. And that's only one issue. There's actually a, a ton of things you can do, color, color contrasting, um, issues with PDF documents, issues with uh, PowerPoint slides. There's so much out there. And it really teaches you how to improve um, uh, the quality of your documents to make them accessible to all students. And so what we did actually at our university, because faculty love this, uh, we had an initiative to actually spread this uh, across all courses. And we took part in a competition uh, named Fix Your Content Day. So this is a global uh, competition. Uh, you know, there were universities there from the UK, from the US, from the Middle East, from Africa, um, from Asia. And the idea was to see which university could fix um, the, the most documents in a day, in, in a 24 hour period. So we joined this competition, um, I think probably because of the time difference between Dubai and, and the US. Uh, at the start of the competition, we were actually winning. Like I think there was about five or six hours, we were in first place. Uh, but then once the North American universities broke up, they, uh, they took over. I think we ended up in eighth place, so we were quite proud of that. And in terms of the Middle East region, we were uh, the regional uh, winners, so we're, we're proud about that. Um, but yes, if your university is, is using uh, a Blackboard Ultra, or if you're considering it, um, definitely try to get this Ally add-on because it's something that, yes, it's fun for faculty to be involved in, but more importantly, it really does make your documents accessible to all the students, especially those with special needs. Okay, so what really surprised me the most about this upgrade um, and about using uh, Blackboard Ultra during the pandemic is that it became more than an LMS for us. It was more than a management system. It actually became an integral part of our daily practice. And even now, as we ease back onto campus, you know, I think half of our staff are now back on campus and everyone's going to be back, especially in September, to an extent. Um, but I think our practice has been completely changed now moving forward. So we've been having all of our team meetings um, online through Blackboard. We've been doing annual performance reviews through Blackboard. Um, even when it comes to recruitment and interviewing candidates, we've been doing it through Blackboard. Uh, we've hosted a number of webinars uh, through the system. We've been hosting virtual research conferences and even for faculty who are doing qualitative research. So they want to interview participants. They want to hold focus groups. Obviously, whilst we were in lockdown, we couldn't meet people face to face. And so all of this was done virtually through Blackboard. Another thing I like about Blackboard is that it plays well with others. So we use Coursera for campus here which is a great tool. There's over 4,000 uh, courses developed by leading universities around the world. Um, and so it's a nice addition for our students when it comes to blended learning or additional studying in their own time. And so we use Coursera. And what's great is that it integrates quite nicely with Blackboard. So initially, when you first read about Coursera, you may assume it's a learning management system, but actually the CEO of the company has very clearly said, this isn't a, a competitor to Blackboard at all. It's something that you should be integrating into your system. So that's great. Um, I think many of you will be familiar with Turnitin uh, uh, as an anti-plagiarism software. Again, it integrates perfectly with that, and I'm actually 
um, grading essays uh, today, actually. Um, uh, so that's been really handy. And I know some of my faculty, some of my colleagues actually use uh, Pearson products. So they have eBooks and some system called MyLab or something. And apparently all of that integrates perfectly as well in, into Blackboard Ultra. So just as a final thought, the, the, the main point that I'd like to say for today really is that Blackboard Ultra has really streamlined our university transition to online teaching and learning during the COVID-19 pandemic, ensuring educational continuity, and it really exceeded our expectations. So I'd like to thank the Blackboard team, uh, both in the Middle East, but also in the UK and USA. Uh, everyone was incredibly supportive during this time, so thank you so much. And for those of you attending today's uh, um, webinar, uh, if this is something you're considering, I highly recommend that you request a trial period uh, of two weeks or whatever Blackboard will give you, and just let your faculty play with the system for a while. I guarantee you they will not want to use anything else because it's fantastic. So thank you for your time today. Dr. Charles, thank you so much for such an insightful uh, presentation. I really appreciate all the info and going through it, it brought me back history since we first met and uh, going yeah. through the evaluation and all of that. And uh, uh, it's it's kind of, uh, I, I was kind of smiling when you when you mentioned uh, the question from the faculty and it's, it's so true in every part of the world when you uh, come back to the faculty and ask them why they're not using uh, e-learning solution, they reverse it back to you. And I found uh, as, as, a, as, I guess, in my past life, a big part of that is always about, well, what, what do you feel, what aspires you to go back into education? And uh, the fact, uh, one of the things I've always uh, talked to our clients about is there is no harm in every few years just to check what's in the market, what's out there, and try to align that to admission. And uh, I, I, I'm just going through my, my notes as you were presenting. Uh, I always admire the fact when you're looking at both systems, it was more evaluation about what can you do with technology and you haven't fallen into the trap of saying here's traditional education, can I use technology to deliver the same method of traditional education? Because you would have failed in either way. Yes. But yeah. definitely the way that you've done it is that you looked into latest trends in e-learning and online education and you found that. And uh, turning the pandemic, uh, I think it's, uh, as I've been saying that in so many different seminars or webinars at this point and presentations, uh, we always need a challenge to turn it into an opportunity. And COVID-19 was a big challenge for us in education, but it was a true proof that we can proceed forward with, uh, with education the way it is, no matter what. Uh, I, a couple of questions, I'm just looking quickly on the screen. Uh, from uh, Noor Dean from University of Bahrain, he was asking why not using safe assign at this point? Uh, why did you end up uh, choosing to go with turnitin.com? Uh, yes, so so basically we already had a license for turnitin. Um, and so because we had the license, we said, well, let's use it un until it's expired and then we'll probably switch to safe assign. So I think our license is still active for another two years. Um, so at that point, we'll revisit the discussion and potentially use safe assign because it's built in I'm sure it works perfectly well, so we may we may actually transition to that at some point too. Okay, that's perfect. So it's more of like a transitional kind of soft uh, solutions since it comes as part of your uh, license already. And again, like one big uh, kind of uh, uh, important point to this, uh, this, uh, regarding uh, other solutions, Blackboard, we end up focusing on certain areas of e-learning, which we excel at. And it's, it's great to know that you can partner with others, like how you showed in your presentation regarding Pearson or Turner, and there could be other technologies, but what we label under our technology partners at this point. So it's always good to see that you reach out and you manage to expand uh, the outreach with this one. I really appreciate all of your insights. Uh, once again, Dr. Charles, and uh, I, will, I will keep an eye on more questions. And as we finish with the second uh, presentation, I might just ask uh, for one more question from your side. That, that's fine. I'll be here to the end. So. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much for that. Uh, I'm going to go on to our next presenter, Dr. Uh, Leia Stoyanovic.